people need to know that you're happy in the Lord. That you're excited to be saved. Grace fills our hearts with joy. You see that in the Bible constantly. People get saved. Sometimes there are tears. Tears of joy. But they get saved and they're so excited and so happy. The, the, the gathering maniac that was was roaming the tombs and cutting himself and chained, and they could not control him, screaming, keeping the community up at night. When Jesus cast the demon out, he was sitting before the foot of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And what did he ask Jesus? Let me go with you. Jesus said, no, it's better you stay back here. I want you to reach, the, reach your community. Tell him what great things God's done for you. But he, the joy of the Lord was so, so overwhelming, he, he, he wanted to go with Jesus. And so we need to have joy. Grace abounds with love. It abounds with justification. It abounds with reconciliation. It abounds with joy. Verse 12, he shifts gears and he talks about the sentence of sin on the world. In verse 12, he says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed, <clears throat> upon all men for that all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no, or there, when there is no law. Neither death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, you blame Adam for your, for, for your loved ones dying. You, you blame Adam for you getting sick and dying. For by the offense of one, many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. The opportunity to escape death, to overcome death, is the gift of God by grace that only comes through Jesus. There's no other way to overcome death done through him. What a blessing. You have life after. There is a happily ever after for the children of God. Amen. It's not fantasy. It's not Disney. It's heaven. It's real. Verse 16 says, not as it was by that one that once sinned, so is the gift for the judgment as by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. Grace abounds in overcoming death, but grace also abounds in overcoming God's judgment. You see, the sins that we committed without Jesus are sure judgment, condemnation. Jesus said, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. There's nothing else for somebody who is lost to do as far as condemnation. They're not going to affect it. They cannot change it. It's inevitable unless something happened in eternity God stepping in, man would have no hope and man would have died without God. Because of the offense of one, there is judgment eternal. But because of the death of one, there's life everlasting and escape from the judgment. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Grace abounds with exoneration from the judgment. We don't have to be judged anymore, thank God. In verse 17, or verse 18, it says, Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came unto all unto justification of life. Grace abounds in righteousness. This passage deals a lot with sin. God's aware of all of our sin. He's aware of all the sin of the entire world. 
but he's also aware of the righteousness of Jesus. <coughs> you better be thankful for his righteousness today. And that his, his righteousness was recognized by a heavenly father who would have and could have and should have sent us to an eternal hell. But because his son in the mind of God and in the foreknowledge of God, decided to fulfill a plan of redemption that is nothing that we will ever fathom or, or be able to imagine how God, why God would ever do so. He did not do so for the angels, but he did so for lowly man. And what a blessing that abounds in righteousness. That means what he has done is he's given us his righteousness so that when we stand before God, God can stand us. Because, quite frankly, if it wasn't for Jesus, God couldn't stand us. Go to Psalm 1. Chapter 1 and verse number 1. Or actually, I believe it's... Just go to Psalm chapter 1 for a second. <clears throat> verse 1 says blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the way of sinner nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful now jump down to verse number 4 the ungodly are not so but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous for the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous but the way of the ungodly shall perish. God will say, depart from me, ye that work iniquity, I never knew you. God can't stand to be in the presence of a sinner. And so you and I need the righteousness of Christ to even be able to go to his presence. That's why we have access to the throne of grace. Thank God for his grace. Going back and closing... In Romans chapter 5, the Bible tells us in verses 20 and 21, it says, Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. You look at this world, and, and it is out of control. You look at the sins of people and how many things people do on a daily basis and the, the depravity and the, the magnitude of the evil Case in point, first time in the history of Seattle, Washington, on the Space Needle, as I'm speaking right now, the gay pride flag is hanging because a corporation or because the organiz an organization raised $50,000 for charity. Wow, that's great. So they're going to give $50,000 to charity and tell boys and girls that that sin is, uh, is acceptable in our society. Yes, God help them and God help us as a nation and as a city. A parade. While we're having church, a parade to celebrate one of the most evil, wicked lifestyles that's ever been on the planet, one of which that God burned off the face of the earth in a town called Sodom and Gomorrah. How quickly we forget. God despises that. God can't stand that. And if you don't think that because God burned them off the face of the earth that God is just is, is changed his mind today and he accepts it, no, it's not acceptable, never will be acceptable. Man has sinned and it's out of control. And we are living in, we're, we're living it very much like in the days of Rome. And the early Christians, these Christians here that Paul's addressing in the, the Roman church were in a vile, wicked, evil place same type of stuff, homosexuality, immorality, every kind of thing that you could imagine. But now look at verse 21. That as sin hath reigned unto death, so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. The sin is bringing death constantly. That was the sentence of sin. Uh, I, as a chaplain with King County and with Woodenville Fire, have the unfortunate privilege of going and 
and trying to pick up the pieces with family of tragedies that are, are mostly an occurrence from sin. I'm glad that that one day is going to be all gone. Sin will no longer have dominion, but God will have victory. Thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. What victory? Victory over sin, victory over death, eternal life.